Hi, this is Shadi. Today we're going to be looking at Elio Gracie's throwing techniques. The goal of the video is not to just look at them and say wow, but rather reflect on it a bit and of course realize that Elio is a product of his generation and we're going to see exactly what that generation used to teach at the time. We're going to see familiar throws, but we're going to see that they differ in some ways and of course every throw that he's going to do it has some reference to it and I'm going to show it to you so again we know that Kimura completely controlled the fight we know that the Ono brothers uh, threw the Gracie brothers many times but that does not negate the fact that they also had decent judo and I would say it's a judo that has some type of finesse and we're going to see it uh, exactly uh, when Elio throws. So, of course, you've all seen this one. This is mostly self-defense oriented. However, you can see the good positioning. You can see uh, the foot placement and movement. Again, these are not judo like the, the way we do today. I'll get to that in a bit in him grip fighting and throwing. But uh, the ones regarding self-defense, you can see that he knows how to move, he knows how to rotate, he knows how to place his feet, he knows how to move at the right uh, time. And uh, again, this is all self-defense, mostly not the judo of today, but uh, you can see that he is very confident on his feet and that's not the case for a lot of jiu-jitsu fighters today and that's unfortunate i say this because just like judo a lot of things are being stripped away um, for competition purposes for expression purposes uh, etc now here let's check out this last uh, harai goshi before we go into his you know kodokan judo style uh, throwing with a jacket so here you see um good Sukuinage and here a Yoko Guruma. You still see it in Gracie schools today, but let's check out uh, some of these uh, proper throws that are quite exquisite and they have this finesse behind them. So here you see uh, Elio rotating his partner and just sliding in his foot. So you see he rotates him, slides his foot and then cuts down with his hands. You see, this is a Tai Otoshi. However, if you know anything about today's Judo, that's not usually how a Tai Otoshi is done. Uh, so let's take a look at uh, Yukio Tani's Game of Jiu Jitsu of 1906. And you see here, it's called a side throw. And as the opponent is moving, you see how he slides his foot and puts it uh, at a very inconvenient angle uh, for his training partner or opponent and from there he can actually cut down with his hands and rotating his hips to finish the throw. Uh, not so much like your average Tayotoshi that we do today with the uh, partner fully you know, stable or static. So here you see the finish, the rotation of the hips, the cutting down with the hands in front of you, the leg is simply there just to block. It is not sweeping, it is not pushing, it's not doing anything, it is just there. You just slide it. Now, compare it to today's style Otoshi, of course, with the evolution of the entries, the countless repetitions, the evolution of competition, etc. You see, uh, entries like these are far more explosive. You fully rotate and you cut down with your hands while your opponent is just static. All you need to do is have a big pull with the hands so you can unbalance them. And from there you rotate, you have a very wide stance, and then you cut down with your hands to finish the throw. So let's see Elio's Taotoshi one last time. So here he rotates, slides his leg across, very similar to the book and then finishes the throw. So here another one is Hane Goshi or spring hips. He just explodes into it 
uh, the hips exploding upward you have a full bend in the knee and finishes it with an arm bar this is from the 1980s i believe this was 1987 on a show so elio was in his 70s at that time so a lot of finesse and explosiveness for someone his age it's truly admirable and here if we go to the principles of jujitsu i believe the book is um, and uh, you can see it's a side way entry he's on his side you can see the hip is somewhat high it's not too low as if lifting with a big hip throw and you see the leg is fully bent so when that shin is across both sides so when you kick you send them flying upward and you finish of course with your hands and uh, this is Sadakazu Uenishi from 1905 so you can see there's a lot of similarities of that generation of Japanese fighters that taught uh, in Europe and Brazil and what Elio's generation was doing so you can see the parallel uh, it's quite astonishing and now let's compare it to a hanegoshi that you would do today full rotation instead of just entering sideways notice the bend in the leg is very minimal compared to what elio did or uenishi did and it is to spread across the leg and then you lift it upwards and using your hips your full hips you because you're fully turning your back rather than just the side of the hips and then you know springing upwards and finishing the throw while Elio just explodes with his legs his knee fully bent and then kicks away while the side of the hips does a bit of lifting um, very similar to the Uenishi throw so here you see there's a full rotation turning your back and then half the hips will do a lot of the works rather than just the side of the waist so you see he's uh, giving him a throw just for fun so notice the rotation of the hips just enters into it the the knee is fully bent and sideways only he doesn't fully turn his back but finishes with his hands very similarly so uh, again you can clearly see he's a product of his generation and uh, there's a lot of finesse in his throw. Again, he's in his 70s here, and he's just moving around, doing good nagekomi. And uh, I'm sure in his youth, he or middle age, he also did a lot of stand-up work. So it's a shame that jujitsu guys only go for wrestling or uh, go for the legs in a way, and does not train them optimally. People say what they do double leg and single leg, but you do not know. The amount of repetitions you need to do in order to get a throw properly i've been doing inner reap for five years now and still i have so much problems with it just because your teacher showed you the the single leg or double leg and you trained it a bit and then during sparring you just grab the guy's leg and he pulls guard it doesn't mean that you can actually do it or you're somewhat efficient in it it needs countless repetitions so if you have anything to add please let me know down below. Consider supporting me on Patreon. This was Shadi and thank you for listening.